Walter Franklin George January 29, 1878, to August 4, 1957, was an American politician from the state of Georgia. He was a longtime Democratic United States Senator and was President pro tempore of the United States Senate from 1955 to 1957. Born near Preston, Georgia, George practiced law after graduating from Mercer University. He served on the Supreme Court of Georgia from 1917 to 1922, resigning from the bench to successfully run for the Senate. A member of the conservative wing of his party, he opposed the 1932 presidential nomination of Franklin D. Roosevelt and opposed much of Roosevelt's domestic policy. He served as chairman of the Senate Finance Committee from 1941 to 1946 and generally supported Roosevelt's handling of World War II. After the war, George emerged as a leading opponent against efforts to end racial segregation. He signed the Southern Manifesto and helped coordinate Southern resistance to the Supreme Court's decision in Brown v. Board of Education. George retired from the Senate in 1957 and died later that same year. Early life George was born on a farm near Preston, Georgia, the son of sharecroppers Sarah Stapleton and Robert Theodoric George. He attended public schools and then Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. He received his law degree from Mercer in 1901 and entered the practice of law. George served as a judge of the Georgia Court of Appeals in 1917 and as an associate justice of the Supreme Court of Georgia from 1917 to 1922. Topic Senator Topic Nineteen Twenties George resigned from the Supreme Court of Georgia to run for a seat in the United States Senate, which became available due to the death of Thomas E. Watson. George won the special election but, rather than take his seat immediately when the Senate reconvened on November 21, 1922, George allowed the appointed Rebecca Latimer Felton to be sworn in, making her the first woman seated in the Senate, and serving until George took office on November 22, 1922, one day later. George was re-elected to his first full six-year term in 1926. He served in the Senate from 1923 until 1957, declining to run for a sixth full term in 1956. At that time, the Republican Party in Georgia was very weak, so the real re-election contests for George were in the Democratic primaries. During the 1920s George, a Democrat, tended to vote much like his fellow senators from the South, conservatively. He supported prohibition and opposed civil rights for blacks, even voting against anti-lynching measures. He was a strong supporter of large corporations, particularly those based in Georgia, like the Coca-Cola Company and Georgia Power Company. In 1928, Georgia's congressional delegation selected George as a candidate for the Democratic presidential nomination. Al Smith from New York received the national nomination but was soundly defeated by Republican candidate Herbert Hoover. Even though George was never a serious candidate for the nomination, it was clear that he was very popular among his fellow Georgians. The stock market crash of 1929 ushered in the Great Depression of the 1930s and, with it, a new era in American politics. Topic: 1930s Still very conservative, George opposed Franklin Roosevelt's nomination for president in 1932. Not very enthusiastic about the New Deal, greatly unlike his fellow senator, Richard B. Russell Jr., George still supported some programs that he saw as beneficial to Georgia, primarily the Tennessee Valley Authority, Social Security, the Rural Electrification Administration, and the Agricultural Adjustment Act. He would also support several of the earlier New Deal policies and during Roosevelt's time in office, he supported 34 New Deal bills that went through the Senate, opposing only 10. George found far more to oppose during Roosevelt's second term, however, including rigorous regulation of utility companies, the Wealth Tax Acts, and Roosevelt's attempt to pack the U.S. Supreme Court with justices favorable to his New Deal policies. Roosevelt, who considered Georgia his second home, because of the time he spent at Warm Springs, tried hard to unseat George, who Roosevelt felt had now been sent out to pasture. 
In a famous speech, delivered in Barnesville on August 11, 1938, Roosevelt praised George for his service and acknowledged his intelligence and honor but urged voters to choose George's opponent, Lawrence Camp, in the upcoming Democratic primary. George shook the president's hand and accepted the challenge. George avoided openly attacking Roosevelt, who was extremely popular in Georgia. Instead, George accused the president's advisers of promoting his interference in Georgia politics. George painted a dire picture of another round of reconstruction to be forced upon Georgia if the Northern advisers had their way. George easily won renomination for his Senate seat, and with the Democratic Party firmly in control of Georgia, he easily won re-election as well. Topic: 1940s. A confidential April 1943 analysis of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee by British scholar Isaiah Berlin working for the British Foreign Office stated of George, An honourable but narrow Southern Conservative, who incurred the displeasure of the New Deal in 1938 when an unsuccessful attempt to «purge» him was made by its then leaders in particular, Edward Flynn, Harry Hopkins, and Thomas Corcoran. This attempt increased his popularity in his state and in the Senate. He left the chairmanship of the Foreign Relations Committee in order to head the, equally important Finance Committee, and is an exceedingly influential figure in the Senate, and the hope of the Conservatives in many parts of the United States. From July 31, 1941 to August 2, 1946, Senator George was the chairman of the United States Senate Committee on Finance. In this position he blocked many of Roosevelt's continued efforts to enact progressive taxation. George and Roosevelt were in greater agreement on foreign affairs. Berlin added that, although George acutely dislikes the domestic policies of the administration, he has never wavered in support of its foreign policy and, like the other cotton and tobacco senators, supports Mr. Hull's reciprocal trade agreements. In the 1940s, George supported Roosevelt's efforts at military preparedness, including lend lease aid to Great Britain, France, and the Soviet Union, already at war, and American defensive buildup in response to the threat posed by Japanese and German militarism. Once the United States entered World War II after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, George embraced the president's vigorous prosecution of the war. He reversed his previous opposition to an international agency designed to keep peace by supporting the ratification of the United Nations Charter in 1945. 1950s He also strongly supported racial segregation like most other Southern senators, signing the Southern Manifesto. In 1956 and introducing it into the congressional record, George's office became a meeting place for Southern senators to plot opposition strategy to the Supreme Court's Brown v. Board of Education decision in 1954, which declared the segregation of schools to be unconstitutional. However, George was less vocal about his pro-segregation views than Russell or his young opponent in the 1956 election, Herman Talmadge. Talmadge had the state political machinery built by his father, Eugene, firmly behind him, and George declined to run for re-election after realizing that despite his seniority and leadership in the Senate and the support of George's businesses, his health would not likely withstand the strenuous campaign. Early in 1957, shortly after his retirement from the Senate, George was appointed special ambassador to the North Atlantic. Atlantic Treaty Organization by President Dwight Eisenhower. He served for about six months before he became seriously ill. He died in Vienna, Georgia and is interred in the Vienna Cemetery. George was a member of twelve committees while he was in the Senate and the chairman of five, including the United States Senate Committee on Foreign Relations from 1940 to 1941 and from 1955 to 1957 and the United States Senate Committee on Finance from 1941 to 1947 and from 1949 to 1953. He was also president pro tempore of the Senate from 1955 to 1957. In the Senate, George became known for his polished oratory and was considered one of the Senate's best public speakers. Topic remembrances The Walter F. George School of Law of Mercer University, the former Walter F. George High School presently South Atlanta High School in Atlanta, Georgia, and Walter F. George Lake in western Georgia are named for him. <laughs>
The Walter F. George Foundation, created at Mercer when the university's law school was named in honor of George in 1947, continues to award scholarships to Mercer Law students who plan to pursue careers in public service. George's portrait hangs in the Georgia State Capitol in Atlanta. A bronze bust of Senator George was dedicated in 1950 in Vienna, Georgia. The bust was donated by the Georgia Vocational Association now Georgia Association for Career and Technical Education for Georgia's support of vocational education and passage of the George Dean Act. In 1960, the United States Postal Service issued a four-cent stamp honoring George. The place of issue was Vienna, Georgia, Georgia's final home. 